And Shakari Richardson's case isn't the only controversy facing the Olympics this week. In fact, the International Swimming Federation is now facing criticism after banning swim caps designed for natural black hair. Does that work? The organization Sorry, claimed the special cap does not, quote, fit the natural form of the head. The British company Soul Cap responded in a statement that reads in part, quote, how do we achieve participation and representation in the world of competition swimmers if the governing body stops suitable swimwear being available to those who are underrepresented? Joining me now with more on this is Daniel Obey. She is the chair and co-founder of the Black Swimming Association. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Danielle. First, I, I wanted to get your reaction to the International Swimming Federation's decision and their claim that athletes have never used nor needed these special caps. The issue that we have with um, with Fener's statement is much bigger than just Soul Cap as a brand. It is a message that is going forth not only to Africans, Caribbeans, Asians, ethnically diverse communities, um, it's also one that is going forth to elite NGBs, non-governing uh, bodies, to say that the sport of elite swimming is not inclusive for all. And what we would like to do, what we would like to see here is FINA to review their decision, because at the end of the day, this goes in direct breach of FINA's constitution and FINA's objective of promoting the sport worldwide, regardless of, of race, gen, gender or, or ethnicity. So, I mean, really, we were quite disappointed when we, when we picked up on their initial statement on banning a product that has been designed to work towards inclusion in the sport. Yeah, and FINA being the international swimming uh, governing body there. I'm curious to get your thoughts on what message you think this ban sends to young black athletes who aspire to be swimmers and who are, as you mentioned, already underrepresented uh, in the sport. A lot of young elite up and coming swimmers do not see themselves represented in the sport. And we have been doing a lot of work as the Black Swimming Association to ensure that we take this to the community and take the, the work really to the sector to ensure that we work towards a future with more ethnic diversity in aquatics. Now, having a statement like Fina's then says, you're not going to see yourself in the sport anytime soon. But we're hoping that Fina having to review that decision would mean that we have young athletes taking up the sport at its highest level. But also when we think about um, how this reflects the figures of the UK, so right now in the UK, 80% of black children in England do not swim. And that is 79% of Asian children as well do not swim. So decisions like that put forward by, by Finna would make this gap even wider. Mm. And it would, um, it, it's already a wide gap but it will widen this even more. We don't want that. We don't want to have the young people feel like they are intentionally being precluded from a sport. And actually the only sport that is also a life skill that goes as far as reducing drowning rates and, um, and working towards ensuring that, that they stay alive. Yeah, aside no, I, from just um, competing in the sport. Absolutely staggering numbers and a very important point that you made there. And it makes you wonder just generally what are some of the other barriers that you see that prevent uh, more representation of people of color in the world of competitive swimming? Why don't we see that balance more? Well, we don't see that balance more. And, and I think that that is the case with Finner's statement. So Finner's statement said that they didn't see their current elite using caps of the configuration um, that, that Soul Cap has put forward for approval. Now, this is because Finner is not aware that hair is a significant barrier that precludes people of color from engaging in aquatics. There isn't any industry research or insight or evidence uh, that has really looked to tackle the understanding the aquatic behaviors of people of color, of ethnically diverse communities, Africans, Caribbeans, and Asians. And if we lead with research, if we re lead with insights, engaging the community and understanding what some of these barriers are from the myths around bone density to the issue with hair, to the issue of modesty and the issue of having the right equipment to engage in aquatics, we will, we will, we will definitely make progress in, in this situation. All right, Danielle Obey, thank you so much for your time and insights. I greatly appreciate it.